Hello everyone, this is my ever-changing redstone maze. This is a project that I have been working on for quite a while now, and I am very happy to finally show you all. This maze will randomly shift and change around you while you try to solve it. At any point, the maze will always have a possible solution, and it will never contain any loops or isolated areas. It is a tileable design, and it is infinitely expandable. There are two versions of this build, this version which uses 2x3 sand doors for walls, and a survival friendly version which instead uses iron doors and is a lot smaller, making it perfect for building and survival. In the survival friendly version, each cell takes up a 6x6x9 area, that's over 3 times smaller than my previous maze generator. So how was I able to make this version so much smaller than the last, and how is this ever changing behavior possible? The answer to both these questions is the new algorithm I used. You may remember that my previous design used the hunt and kill algorithm, but for this design, I decided to create my own algorithm. This algorithm works a bit differently than most other algorithms. Instead of creating a new maze from scratch, it will continuously modify an existing maze until it becomes something completely new. Here's how it works. We start with any perfect maze that being a maze with no loops or isolated areas. Each cell will point to one neighboring cell, and a single cell will point nowhere. We will call this the origin cell. Next, we repeat the following steps. 1. We have the origin point to a random neighboring cell. 2. That neighboring cell becomes the new origin. 3. We have the new origin cell point nowhere. And that's it! Just by repeating these three steps, you can turn any existing maze into another unique perfect maze. The logic for this algorithm is incredibly simple, which is why I was able to make this redstone build so small. The most important thing to note is that after every iteration of the algorithm, the maze will be perfect. This is what allows for the ever-changing behavior of the contraption. But how is it possible that performing these few steps on any perfect maze will always result in another perfect maze? Well, the reason for this is a bit complicated, so I won't be going over it here, but I go over the answer in my previous video, so if you are curious, then you can check that out. This algorithm can also be used to generate entirely new mazes. The algorithm requires that you start with any perfect maze, so you can use something like this as your starting point. In this maze, all the cells point right, the rightmost cells point down, and the bottom right cell is set as the origin. This technically qualifies as a perfect maze since it contains no loops or isolated areas, so we can give it to the algorithm as a starting point. The algorithm will then transform it into an actually complex maze. I'm still trying to figure out a name for this algorithm, so if you have any suggestions, then you can leave them in the comments. This algorithm took me a long time to figure out, and it was without a doubt the lengthiest part of this whole project, but I was immensely satisfied once I finally figured it out. The contraption has two modes. First is Labyrinth mode. This mode will run the machine indefinitely until you turn it back off. This allows you to play the maze while it randomly shifts and changes around you. The second is Classic mode. This mode will run the machine for a set amount of time before automatically turning itself off. This mode essentially makes the machine behave like a classic maze generator, much like my previous design. Hitting this button will generate a new maze, and you can play the maze once it's ready. I used a timer to easily control how long the algorithm should run when generating a new maze. The length of the timer is determined by the number of items in this dropper. Each item will add 2 seconds of length to the timer, so you can easily set how long you would like the algorithm to run. The longer the timer, the more different the maze will be from the previous one. But how long should you run the contraption if you want the next maze to be completely different from the previous one? Well, I find that running the generator for 10 times the maze area iterations, then it will result in a maze that is almost completely unique from the previous one. This design runs on a 4 tick clock, meaning each iteration takes 0.4 seconds to complete. Using these values, we can create a formula to solve for the runtime of the generator. And we get that the runtime in seconds is equal to 4 times the area of the maze. However, I find that you don't really need a completely new maze each time, since you won't really notice the similarities when playing in first person. So I would personally recommend running the contraption for three times the area instead. But of course you don't have to stick to these numbers exactly, it all depends on personal preference. 
So how did I go about translating this algorithm into redstone? I started with the origin node. For each cell, I would need one bit to store whether the cell is the origin. I also needed the ability to move the origin from cell to cell. After a bunch of experimenting, I came up with this design. If a cell is the origin, the cauldrons will be in the up position. Otherwise, they will be in the down position. There are some comparators on each side that will allow the origin to be transferred from one cell to the other when unlocked. Here it is in action. We can quickly unlock the comparators to make the origin move in any direction. If we hook this up to a randomizer, we get an origin that will randomly travel around the grid. Next, every time the origin moves out of a cell, we need to set the direction of that cell to be the direction that the origin just moved in. In order to store the direction of each cell, I used four SR latches, one for each direction. Next, we need to detect when the origin moves from cell to cell and have it activate the SR latch that corresponds with that direction. To do this, I replaced this block with a note block and added an observer on top of it. Whenever the origin moves in this direction, it will power this note block, the observer will then detect that, and it will set the SR latch that corresponds to that direction. So this takes care of these two steps, but we still have this last step. Every time a cell becomes the new origin, we need to set its direction to none. To do this, I used this circuit. Every time a cell becomes the origin cell, this observer will send a pulse that resets all the SR latches, making the cell directionless. And we're almost done! There are just a couple more things we need to add. Right now, we can't actually play our maze, so let's add the actual maze. I made each cell a room with doors leading between the rooms. To determine whether a door will be open or not, we look at the two cells separated by the door. If either of these cells points to the other, then the door will be open. Otherwise, the door will be shut. Now that should be all of the circuitry done, but there's actually one last component. You may have noticed this component in front of the randomizer on the final design, but in order to explain what the circuit does, I have to tell you about an unexpected problem I faced when designing this thing. When testing the generator, I found that it worked perfectly with a 5 tick and 6 tick clock, but when I tried going down to 4 ticks, the generator would eventually break. It took me forever to finally figure out what was causing this. See, in Minecraft, there's this feature where if you repeatedly power a redstone torch on and off fast enough, it will burn out. In the generator, there was a chance that the origin cell would go back and forth between two cells repeatedly. And since the clock was running so fast, this continuous back and forth motion would cause the redstone torches in the cells to burn out, breaking the system. This caught me very off guard, since I hadn't ever considered that the contraption would go fast enough to cause a burnout. So I started thinking about how I would solve this problem. A simple solution would be to just increase the length of the clock, so the randomizer wouldn't be able to power the torches on and off fast enough. But I didn't really want to make the generator any slower. After a lot of thinking, I came up with this circuit. If the randomizer outputs the same value more than twice in a row, then that output will be temporarily blocked by this circuit. This prevents the repetitive back and forth movement causing the burnout. With that, the maze generator was complete. If you would like to build this in survival, then I have linked a tutorial video in the description. This will guide you through building each individual cell, as well as how to set up the maze once it's built. But before you go and build this yourself, I highly recommend checking out Rapscallion's maze generator first. It's about the same size as this one, and it's a lot faster. Building one of these in survival is a big commitment, so I recommend testing out both these generators first to see which one works best for you. I'll link their video in the description, along with a few more cool generators I found. And if you're planning to build this one for the ability to play the maze in labyrinth mode, then make sure your device is able to run it first. Feel free to use this algorithm in any of your own builds. So if any game designers out there want to implement this sort of ever-changing maze into your game, then you can give this algorithm a try. Or if you want to create your own redstone maze generator using this algorithm, then you are free to do so. I think the algorithm has a lot of potential, so I would love to see what you guys do with it. And that is all I have for you today. Before I go, I would like to thank you all for 300 subscribers. And thank you for the massive support on the first maze generator video. I never could have imagined that video doing as well as it did, so thank you for all your support. It means a lot. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.